Hello everybody. Remember this prototype? This I put an adjustable B plus on this prototype and I figured out how to put that into original BC3 and 3000. Do sort we, of. Sort of? Sort of. Kind of. Yep. Well, that, you know, you did. <clears throat> First of all, why don't you explain just just as a as just as a review? Why don't you explain what B plus is? Do I need to? Yes. I thought everybody knows it. No. Okay. B plus is just the power supply DC power supply rail for vacuum tubes. I might have done it so long that I just kind of expect everybody knows it. Yeah. No. Take it for granted. Yeah. Don't take things for granted. No. No granted. No granted. Oh, okay. So. And yes, you have figured out how to fit that into the BC3. And 3000. And 3000, but <laughs> in two different ways, right? We got this one here, which is a retrofit. Yeah. And then there's another way, and that we got, well, that one is is a rebuild. Yes. Yes. That, that, that prototype, prototype is prototype, but that's a, that's a, the, the two kinds of upgrade, a retrofit and a rebuild, right. the power supply rebuild. Yeah, so why don't we talk about what's involved in the retrofit, first of all. The retrofit's the easier one to do. Yeah. It's got, there's, there's less work, there's less cost. What you, what you wind up with, though, is only two voltage options. Yeah, two voltage options. Yeah, so you wind up with the original high voltage option on the B-plus rail, yep. and then you have a low voltage option which is about a third. 30%. Of the, of the yeah. yeah, 33% of the original voltage. The original voltage, okay. Now, we just listened to that, and that makes, uh, I don't want to go into how things sound, because talking about how things sound is, it's just dry. But it was it was good. It, it made a nice improvement. Um, yeah. I, I, it, it, to me, there's there's a slight, slightly more pure sound. There's, there's better scale and there's better placement of instruments and there's there's a particular improvement in in mid and high mid range frequencies so vocals saxophones violins things like that that's th those are the, those are the impressions that I got um, the nice thing about the retrofit is that you can keep the original sound of the preamplifier mm -hmm. and then you've got the low voltage sound the low voltage sound okay so that's that's the that's the advantage of the of the retrofit. The retrofits lower cost, less less aggressive. You get to keep your original sound. You get a low voltage sound, which is suitable for for a lot of different things. I mean, it. I find it depends on your speakers, but I need another couple months of listening to be sure about that. Yeah, but we. When we did the other preamp, the NSF three twenty five, we have discovered matching using a preamp to match speaker is just as important of matching the power amp with speaker. It's matching, a, it's ma a big deal. Matching, matching using preamp to match speaker is actually not quite so called matching. Is uh, changing the personality of the speaker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, changing the personality of the speaker more than matching. Matching between speaker and power amp is like, okay, are we working right or are we working wrong? That's the kind of matching with between speaker and power amp. But using preamp is more. It's no, not. I, I I would try not to use the word matching. Is using a preamp is adjusting what this what the sound that you prefer. Yep. Yeah. Finding a compatible personality. More, more than, more than that. Yeah. Compatible, pers compatible personality between the preamp and uh, between power amp and the speaker is important. Otherwise, it just won't work. Right. They get divorced. Yep. Yeah. So, but preamp, they all work. It just, what type of sound? Yep. Okay. Now this one, I'm gonna grab this. Okay, grab it. I'm grabbing it. There we go. Look at me grabbing things. So this would be a BC three. Or a BC three thousand rebuild, and what happens with the rebuild is you get it. First of all, it's 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 far more intensive, it's far more expensive. There's a lot more work that goes on. 
what you wind up with is you wind up with a choice of three voltages. But then I had to grab that. You can't just show this. Yeah. Well, I, you know. I got one thing, you got the other. Actually, that's the important thing. Yeah, that's the important that's one. The important because the knob is not on your on yeah. your thing. This is the knob. This is the knob. Yeah. Okay, knobs. Okay. No, I only have the mute switches. Yeah, you only have the mute switch. This is the knob. So I, then I'll put a knob like this. Knob? Can you see a knob? On the power supply. <laughs> Most people are probably seeing two knobs right now. Two knobs? Yeah. Us two. I'm not that wrong. <laughs> Continue. Oh. I must say something wrong then. Knob! Knob! No S. Knob. Single. No, not pull -off. So you have three positions of this knob you turn to get the three different B+. Plus. Right. The, the big difference is the B plus voltage in this system starts off way lower. So, so you don't, with this, with this particular upgrade, the rebuild, you would not retain the original sound of your preamplifier. Now, let me, let me jump in here on my own statement and say this. It's not like it sounds like a completely different preamplifier. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not like it doesn't sound like a BC three or BC three thousand anymore, but you've started at a, at a much lower voltage, so you don't have the original operating voltage. Now, if you really like that original operating voltage, well, the, the, my question would then be, why are you upgrading in the first place? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. But, but so so with this with this upgrade, your your original voltage is about a third. Sorry, your initial voltage is about a third of the original voltage that you would have had, and then it goes down about two thirds of the way, and then it goes down about to one third of the way. So you've got a new lower voltage, and then a two thirds voltage setting, and a one third voltage setting. Those those numbers are approximate, but they're yeah. about so they're the about right. so the lowest voltage setting of the rebuilt version is almost like one ninth of the original. Right. So the lowest voltage setting of the rebuild, sorry, the highest voltage setting of the rebuild would be about the same as the lowest voltage setting of the retrofit. Okay, that's kind of complicated math. Let's start big beginning. Yeah. So we have four different setting of voltage. The original, okay, the original, yep. and then the Lower voltage of the rebuilt, uh, the retrofit upgrade is the same voltage as the highest of the rebuild. So we have one third of the original voltage. Right. So this starts at one third of the original voltage, and then go. F uh, yes, this yeah. they start at one third of the original voltage, yeah. and then go two more step lower. Yeah. Two third and one third of that. Yeah. So therefore, we have the original voltage one third, and then. Um, Two ninth and one ninth. Okay, that's more complicated. Okay, you don't like two ninth. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not like I don't like two ninth, <laughs> but it's more complicated. Well, it depends on Any, how. Yeah. Anyhow, the rebuild is a much lower voltage. The rebuild is a much lower voltage phenomenon. It's it's a much lower much, much lower voltage settings. This one has the original voltage. The the retrofit has the original voltage and one lower voltage setting. Yep. Okay. Now the reason we the, I mean the reason we're talking like this and trying to make it so complicated is we're trying to force you to ask us questions. We're doing this on purpose. Ask him. Okay, actually, no, we're not. We're not doing it on purpose. We just we just made it confusing. So, But we are willing to answer questions. Um, and, of co and the other thing, too, is that it's important to listen to this stuff because we're finding, I'm finding, um, that not all the voltage settings are applicable for all speakers, right? I'm finding speakers that I'm surprised how well they do. Like, uh, for example, oh, not these. Um, you can't see them. There's a pair of ATC Active speakers over there somewhere that I meant to put up on a post on the uh, Angela Gilbert Fan Club on Facebook. Um, yeah, we took the system set apart already. We took the, yeah. So, so one speaker is like way over there and one's way over here. Surprisingly, um, I thought that being, you know, I thought that being fairly low sensitivity speakers that the that the highest voltage setting setting on the rebuild would be fine but 
the medium setting and the low setting wouldn't be fine. Well, the low setting was a little questionable, but the medium setting was really good. Which is which is still pretty low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, not only was it good on the active ones, it was good on the passive ones too. So I got a bit of a surprise there. Um, it, it, so it, it really depends on the speaker. But generally speaking, what we're finding it like I mean, again, generally, not always, but generally, we're finding that the lower the voltage on the B plus rail, the higher the sensitivity of speaker um, is required to to thrive with it. So when I put the Heretic audio speakers on it, which are 97% or sorry, 97 dB uh, sensitive, the the lowest setting on this was clearly the best way to go. Now I have to add something on to throw a monkey wrench into equations by lowering lowering the B plus does not change the gain of the tube. No. Changes so the bias of the tube. Change the bias of the tube, but does not change the gain of the tube. So you have the same gain. So don't don't try to relate it to the the lowest B plus higher sensitivities. It does it is not exactly the relationship. No. But it just so happened to work that way in general. Yep. There are exceptions. Yep. So if you have a BC3 or BC3000, you've got a couple of, uh, apart from adding capacitance, which is always a good thing too. Yeah, um, yeah we have been doing that for years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that started back in the late 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now you've got a couple of other options uh, that, you know, might might be a really, really good fit if you've if you've changed speakers and you're kind of like, well, I'm not so sure this is working properly. Um, now you've got now you've got a couple of different settings that you can play with to um, to, to work on the problem. Yeah, and sometimes changing room too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's about it. All right. So we can put this down. We can put these down. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. If you've got questions, ask you know me. where to ask. <laughs> ask me. Please ask me. I have answers. Bye.